How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Cyber Demon Gaming. My name is Matt, and we are once again playing Magic the Gathering. I know, I know. My Black Dose deck got us to Platinum, which was awesome. Well, now we're going to try a new type of deck. This is also kind of a mid-rangey deck, but it's all about getting land down, doing things with land, and dropping big things and hurting people. We actually played against a version of it uh, in the last episode. It's called Teamer Ramp. Now, Teamer is a, one of the tricolors. It is red, green, and blue. Uh, I don't know why it's called Teamer. It just is. Just deal with it. And um, it's actually pretty... Most of the time, it's used in a ramp setting. or it's a, There was Teamer Ramp and Teamer Adventures and Teamer... Uh, uh, wilderness Reclamation. It, it always has to do with getting a bunch of land down because it's green and blue. You can get that land down really quickly and then do big things. Uh, most of the time it deals... If there's an extra turn taking uh, portion of it, you take extra turns, things like that. So, let's go over this deck list, shall we? We run one Spikefield Hazard slash Spikefield Cave. Um, it's for... Dealing with quick creatures, uh, it's also another form of red. Um, deals one damage. It costs one. Deals one damage to target to any target. If a permanent is dealt damage this way, it would and this way would die this turn. Exile instead. So going up against Croxa, you hit Croxa when Croxa comes out. Sure, you discard a card, but Croxa is then exiled instead of being able to do the escape. We run four Lotus Cobras, and don't you like that art? That art. That art right there is beautiful. I don't care who you are. Uh, four Lotus Cobras. One green, one colorless. It is a 2-1 with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. And as you can tell, because I called it Teamer Ramp version 2, since there are two versions of this deck, we're playing one. Uh, there is a lot of fun things to do with landfall. And then we have two Shatter Skull Smashings, or Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass can come down as a red land. Um, you can pay three to have it come into un untapped, or you can have it come play tapped. Or you can use it as Shatter Skull Smashing. It costs two red and X. Shatter, Shatter Skull Smashing. I can talk, I swear. Deals X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is six or more, Shatter Skull Smashing deals twice X damage divided as you choose among them instead. Now that seems like a tall order. It really isn't. This deck can get land out like no one's business. So we run two of those. We have two Glass Pool Mimics. You may have Glass Pool Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types. Or you can drop it as a land. Um, this does come in handy when you have something like Land of War Visionary or Kazandu Mammoth, things like that. And we have four Bone Crusher Giants. Everybody knows what these are. The giant himself is one red, two colorless. He comes in in a 4-3. Whenever he becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. And the instant, of course, is Stomp. One red, one colorless. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. One Kazool's Fury. Now, Kazool's Fury is something that a lot of people don't actually play. Kazool Cliffs is the other side of that. As an additional cost to cast this spell, we only run one. Sacrifice a creature. It costs one red, two colorless. Kazool's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. Now, why are we dropping that? I mean, we don't have anything big, right? Just you wait. Don't get ahead of me. We run four Cultivates, and that artwork is also beautiful. This whole deck has beautiful artwork in it. Uh, it's one green, two colorless. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reel those cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Put one onto the battlefield tapped and one into your hand, then shuffle your library. This is actually a very good, um, a very good tempo card. On turn three, if they don't have, if they're not pressing, if you don't have anything else pressing to do, you play Cultivate. You get a turn four, you get a you get a fourth mana, and then on turn four, you get your fifth mana, which actually is very important. Uh, we run four of those. Then we have Lanawar Visionaries. It's one green, two colorless. He is a two two, and when he enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. What? And then on top of that, he adds one green to your mana if you tap him. Not bad, if I do say so myself, for a Lanwar Elf, basically. He's a beefier Lanwar Elf. 
Then we got Kazandu Mammoths slash Kazandu Valley. We run two of these. Uh, it can come in as a uh, come into play tapped as a green land or two green one colorless. He comes down as a three three elephant. It's a badass looking elephant, if I do say so myself. And whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, Kazandu Mammoth gets 2-2 two, two until end of turn. So 3-3 three, three becomes a 5-5, five, five, and if you happen to have, I don't know, Cultivate in your hand, a 5-5 a five, five becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Then, of course, we have Terror of the Peaks. This is a new, not a new card. He's from M21, but he is a card that is being used more now. He's... Two red, three colorless. He's a 5-4 flyer. Spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost an additional three life to cast. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. It doesn't sound like a lot until you realize some of the things we have going. We run one Shark Typhoon. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. It also has cycling, one blue, one colorless, and X. Whenever you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. It is the Shark NATO. Everybody knows what the Shark NATO is. Now, how is Terror of the Peaks a good card? Well, Beanstalk Giant. Beanstalk Giant is really, really, really impressive with this. It's one green, six colorless. Big, beefy boy. And Beanstalk Giant's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Now, this deck is really good at getting lands on the battlefield. Really good. And he's also an adventurer, so he's got fertile footsteps. One green, two colorless. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That means put it onto the battlefield untapped. Uh, so if you have Lotus Cover out and you do Beanstalk Giant, you have two mana, so you can then stomp something. It's it's good all around. Now, how do we do some of these things? These are some expensive cards on the high end, right? We got eight, seven, seven, six, five. Well, Genesis Ultimatum. We run four of these. It is two red, three blue, Two colorless. Genesis Ultimatum is very powerful. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. And then you exile the Ultimatum because being able to bring back this spell is busted. Um, so here's the thing. You cast Genesis Ultimatum and you get a Beanstalk Giant, a Terror of the Peaks, and a Bone Crusher Giant. You drop all three. Well, Terror of the Peaks then since you have at least 7 land, does a total of 10 damage to whatever you want. You catch my drift here? So, Terror of the Peaks is really good with Genesis Ultimatum. I've, there have been times I was playing against a deck like this, thinking I was winning, I had like 15 life, and they cast Genesis Ultimatum, and bam, Terror of the Peaks comes down and two Beanstalk Giants, and I'm like, well, that's game. So, what else do we run? Well, we run Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Ugin also has one of those abilities. Just like the last episode, you saw me play Ugin with some actually pretty successful attempts to play Ugin. Uh, play, he costs 8 colorless. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, Dragon deals 3 damage to any target. It's plus 2. Minus X. Exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's 1 or more colors. Good board wipe. Or minus 10, you gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, then put up to 7 permanent cards from your hand onto the, li onto the battlefield. It's that 7 life, but basically Ugin is usually used for that minus X ability. Now, this deck deals with a lot of land. So what lands do we have? Well, we run 3 islands, 2 mountains, 4 forests, 1 ridge or lava glide pathway slash ridge glide pathway. Uh, and then we have four Timber Crown Pathways, or Crag Crown Pathways, four Ketria Triomes, and four Fabled Passages. Lots of land. So we got, we got four, eight, 12, 16, 17, 20. We have 22 base, or 22 lands, plus we have the Shatter Skulls, and the Spikefield Hazards, Kazandu Mammoths, we got a lot of land. And this deck, I know it doesn't sound like it has a lot of land, but this deck has an ability to get that land out pretty quickly, which thins out the deck. Makes it a lot easier for you to draw stuff. In the sideboard, we have another spike-filled hazard, two chain-web arcaners, 
which are a one-drop spider, which has reach. When Chainweb Arcaner enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to e equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent each and opponent controls. Or you can escape it. Escape for five, two green, three colorless. Exile four other cards from your graveyard, and it comes onto the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. So it becomes a one, two to a four, five, and deals four damage to whatever flying creature with flying out there. We run two of those. Run a foul. Target opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. And we run two of those. They're just one green. Two negates. Four scorching dragon fires. Two mystical disputes. One Vivian Monsters Advocate. She costs five, two green, three colorless. You may look at the top card of your library any time, and you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Doesn't seem that impressive when it comes to how many creatures we actually have in this. It does seem like a lot. At a plus one, create a 3 3 green beast creature token. Put your choice of vigilance, reach, or trample on it, and then minus two when you cast your next creature spell this turn. Search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. So yeah, and then we run an additional Shark Typhoon. So this thing, this deck has some, uh, this deck definitely has some, uh, some pretty good stuff on it. So I am not the biggest teamer fan. But I like this style of deck. It's kind of a more mid-rangey deck. There is a version of control. It's it definitely makes it so it's harder for your opponent to do stuff like Mystic Dispute and things like that when you have so much extra mana. So let's go ahead and jump into some matches and see how Teamer Ramp version two does. Alright, we are playing Darth. Darthy? We'll just go with Darth. And we get to play first. Look at that. They're playing Yarian Sky Nomad, so we're dealing with a control meta type deck. We're going to play first. Um, this is actually a really decent hand, so we're going to keep it. We're going to be paying three, but, you know, it's all right. Unless we get another land. If we get an untapped land, we're good. If we don't get an untapped land, it's fine. All right, so we're going to pay three. Oops. That is the wrong button. We're going to pay three. Because we want that out. Alright, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. They didn't, they didn't stomp it right away. Uh, let's see. Uh, blue burn. Uh, oh, there it is. Well, you know, we're just going to go ahead and draw a card. How's that? Does that work for you? Works for me. Uh, you know, we're going to draw another card. And then we're going to attack. I do wish we had some more blue and red mana, but that's fine. We're going to go ahead and do this next. We're going to get ourselves some blue, because that's what we need. I'm expecting death for one of these. Oh, I was wrong. Am I wrong? We are definitely making it hurt. Alright, 
So red, blue. see him tap out. Because I know they have a counter spell. We're gonna do this. We're gonna drop that. We're gonna we're gonna force that counter spell. Right at the bottom, both of them, that's good. I need to get rid of Terror of the Peaks. Pig blue. Alright, we're gonna pick black. And Kazoo's fury him to the face! Look. So he was either gonna go for the Ashiok. Or he was going to go for the the uh, Blood Chief, which would make him tap out anyway, which allows me to play Ultimatum, which is all that matters. All right, we got a we got a, a 
a heavy deck here. Um, I don't know if Shark Typhoon is going to be good, but we're going to put it in there. So we're going to take out the two Glass Pool Mimics. They don't have anything, as far as I know, quick, so get rid of the hazard. Get rid of one of the cultivates. And... Lotus Cobra. We'll see how this goes. Now, they're not playing white, so I don't have to worry about Elspeth Conquer's death. But I do have to get rid of, or worry about, um, this has the possibility of being insane. We're going to go ahead and change Would you look at that? Lotus Cobra is not surviving. Lotus Cobra did survive! What? It's gonna be Blood Chief Ascension or whatever it's. Elspeth's Nightmare. There we go. Alright. Now go ahead and get a red. Bye, Ugin. That's nice, because that's, yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to ex exile the two cards in my graveyard. Ooh. Kept them both on top. My guess is, is they don't think I run Counterspell. But are they going to be shocked? another one. Draw a card. Just need a couple different other lands. I got a lot of green. <laughs> uh, I have enough to cast this. And uh, if I drop another land, I'd be able to try cast this and hold up a negate. Get the negate. All right, just need. Uh... Just need one more blue land. Just one more blue land. 
I do kind of want to bait out their counter spell though. Like I said, knew they had it. Probably have another one. There we go. Believe it or not, I'm okay with that. Because, if I can get a blue land, the chances of them having more uh, they may have another mystical dispute, possibly, but I doubt it. Could be wrong. They could also have uh, Drown in the Lock for all I know. Save the counter spell. I mean, it would be nice to have something to use him with. I'm assuming uh, there's going to be an extinction event happening. It's all odd. more than two negates. Maybe another uh, mystical dispute. Let's give it a shot. It's going to be countered. Well, it would be nice if we get a land. I 
mean, it's possible they have a negate. Perfect. Well, not necessarily perfect, but we're going to try it. Can't let that stay out there. They need to get rid of they need a counter spell or to get rid of Terror of the Peaks. Which will drop Ugin down. yet. So this is Demir Yorian, I guess. I don't. They got the Triome in there. For... Do not ignore my draconic talents. We are not out of the woods, but... 
are also ghost fire my greatest creation that doesn't do anything They don't have Drown in the lock, because he'd be dead. I come bearing the wisdom of the ancients. Return to the essence of the multiverse. All right, I pretty much have no basic land left. But they are working with a bigger deck than we are. So we may be beaten. Oh. Nope, they're saving that. They're saving that counter spell. Oh, they got the Solemn anyway. Good on them. Well, that doesn't do anything. So, we are beaten. Alright. We will move on to game two. I do think we need Lily. Uh, so let's get rid of. No, let's. So we're going to keep that in. We'll do I know I just took them all out, but... So Darth added more counter spells. Alright, this is good to go. Again,
can't do anything with the mana, which is fine. I may only be able to show you, show you guys one match. This is a pretty long one. And he gets a draw card. No. GG. Negate comes in for the win. Okay, because this is going so long, I'm gonna try and do a best of one. And we'll see how things go. Actually, we look pretty solid.
that goose got hooked up. So one, two, three, yeah. So I will be able to uh, Genesis Ultimatum. That's gonna hurt. And they are nice enough to, to say good game. The scoot swarm is the scoot swarm is nice. And there you go. It does work in best of one. Kind of felt bad, but not. It really kind of showed you what this deck can do because that was like turn four or five. Turn five. <clears throat> All right. That was Teamer Ramp version two. Uh, it's based off of Terror of the Peaks and Genesis Ultimatum and Ugin and all those fun cards that everybody likes to play but hates to play against. Um, this deck is really fun. It is, it is definitely a ramp deck, as you saw in the best of one game. I would love to show you guys more, but as you saw, that first match um, took forever. But this deck has a way of just, if you can land the Genesis Ultimatum, even against control decks, it can usually mean, hey, that's game. And dealing with Ugin and thing less, things like that. So the games, the, the deck is actually super fun. It's really easy to pick up and play. I would say, if we were going to put it on a tier level, I would say it's a tier 2, maybe a tier 1.5 but it's definitely one of those decks that is up there. You probably, if you've been playing on the ladder, you've been playing ranked, you have seen it more than a few times, you know the power of it. So I'm going to leave the deck list down below if you want to go ahead and try it yourself. And uh, if you like what I do here, go ahead and hit like, share this around, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you know when I upload the next episode of MTG, and you know when I upload the next episode of... Uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, you know, when I upload the fir very first episode of Cyberpunk 2077, or if you like Star Wars and things like that, I have a playlist of Jedi Fallen Order, and you can find out when I upload that. But, with all that being said, my name is Matt, this has been Cyberdemon Gaming, and I hope to see you in the next video.